So like I said, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about tonight. I'm here, of course, to talk to you guys about some fear. I got, you know, some clean underwear on. I got me a nice jacket. Got me some bling. Got me some Spider-Man watch on. Good yeah. to go. But, see, everyone can relate to fear. Everyone knows the power of fear and know all the things that fear can do in your life to hold you back. But I'm here to talk to you about being a fear fighter. See, did you know in the Bible that fear is mentioned 365 times in the form of fear not? 365 times. That means every single time, every time, that you wake up in the morning, doo -doo 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 -doo, you sit, you put your feet on the ground, you have a fear not from God waiting for you, no matter what is in store for you for the rest of the day. So you can have the worst day coming, the worst day in the whole entire world. And you just, like I said, you just feel like the weight of the world's on your shoulders and that you've got these lions that are chasing after you. But you have a fear not from God waiting for you. See, psychologists say that there are 2,000, 2,000 identifiable fears and phobias known to mankind. Everything from the fear of water to the fear of heights to the fear of losing cell phone re um, reception. Everything. But out of those 2,000 fears, only two of them are we born with. The fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. That's why whenever you slam on a door, a baby jumps. It's like, whoa, what's that noise? You know, because that's only two fears we're born with. So that means 1,998 fears are learned fears. You learn them over time. You know, you learn to be afraid of heights because it hurts when you fall. You learn to be, you know, afraid of lightning for Mitch McCann. You know, you, you, you learn to be afraid of these things. But... Let me tell you, God has not given you the spirit of fear. One of the main things that was released in this world whenever Adam took the apple and take a, took a bite was fear. It says in Genesis that, you know, Adam was hiding and God said, why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? And Adam replied, God, I fear. But if we can learn fear, we should be able to unlearn fear. But the issue here is, how do we do that? How do we fight our fears? So I'm going to talk to you about one of the greatest fear fighters that I feel is in the Bible. Someone that, you know, you never really heard of. It's not David and Goliath. It's not all those normal people that you hear of. This man is mentioned in one verse. One, well, one prominent verse in the Bible. He's mentioned throughout, but one prominent verse. His name is Benaniah. And he's mentioned in 2 Samuel chapter 23. See, Benaniah woke up one day and decided that he was going to track and chase a lion. Number one, normal people don't chase lions. Okay? But that's not it. It's not just like, okay, we're going to walk out and we're going to chase a lion down here. It's snowing. It's snowing. It's cold. It's freezing. They had sandals. He had, you know, groin cloths on. They didn't have that much. It, he's tracking the footprints of a lion in the snow. And... So, I can just, as I'm reading this here, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, Ben and I, he's just, he's just creeping along, and he's creeping along, there's snow fluttering around, it's cold, you can see the breath coming out. Can you, can you see it? Can you, can you just imagine it rain? I kind of go back to that 300 movie where the little boy is, you know, trying to stalk the lion himself. And, it, and all of a sudden, he, he rounds this corner, rounds, and all of a sudden, through the blur and all the confusion of the snowflakes going around, he sees these, these menacing, piercing eyes, yellow eyes that are just, just locked. Look like something was crawling, creeping towards him. Next thing you know, as his eyes begin to focus, you know, he noticed that he's locked eye and eye with a lion. And it says in this moment that the lion began to lunge at him. Pops, can you imagine being in a situation and thinking, oh son, there's a lion that's about to, about to eat me. They say that a lion's tongue, you can, a lion's tongue, if it licks you, like with power, with force, by the third lick, it's ripping skin, just with its tongue. It's like sandpaper, just rip it right off your bone. Can you imagine that? Like, just ginormous cat, just about to lunge at you. Then it says, something must have happened in the snow and the ice. The lion falls into a pit, just falls into a pit. It's awesome. If it was me, I would have been like, thank you, Jesus, Lord, delivers again, and I would have walked out of there. 
See, Benaniah was different. He was a fear fighter. So, on a snowy day, snowflakes all around, cold, freezing, Benaniah not only tracks and chases a lion, but he jumps into the pit and fights the lion. Now I can hear the, the roaring of the lion and the screams of Benaniah as his fights pursuing on and just continue to going. And then all of a sudden there's this deafening silence. Just complete silence. Let me tell you, when there's a fight going on and then there's silence, that's not a good thing. And all of a sudden, Benaniah starts, and he crawls up out of, the, out of the pit. And I can just see the slash marks across his chest and his face and the, the blood dripping down, the hot blood that's just melting the snow as it's hit the ground. But guess what? If Ben and I looks that bad, can you imagine how the lion looked? On that day, with snow on the ground, with odds against him, Ben and I received one of the most well-known, well, not well-known, but one of the greatest victories in the Bible because he voluntarily jumped into a pit because something in his spirit told him that something in his destiny is connected to him jumping into the pit. Now, thank you, Jesus. I got I got a, a lion rug in front of my, you know, couch at home. But from this, he became David's head bodyguard from the feeding the lion because you know there was a position for that, and we all know that lion chasers make good bouncers. And whenever the reign of David was over and King Solomon was in, he became the head of host of Israel. I believe Israel. Hang on. Which is the second most powerful man in the country. From defeating the lion, from facing his fear, from overcoming adversity, he was able to gain all this stuff. But see, how do we become lion chasers? That's what this whole message is about. How do we become lion chasers? How do we face our fears? How do we overcome adversities and difficulties and obstacles and reach our fullest potentials that God has given us? First, you have to train. Do you think Ben and I just woke up one morning and was like, man, today looks like a good day to chase a lion with no training. I mean, I, I, can, just, I can just imagine, I, I can just imagine hours upon hours of combat training. It, it's like, oh, what's that movie? I can't even remember. Who cares? It, that karate Kid. Karate Kid. Just how much he trained to fight some little Chinese kid. Can you imagine how much Ben and I had to train in order to face a lion? Hours of hours in combat.